Great, now that we have created a cornerstone of our future tables, which are cell components, we are ready to proceed with assembling rows. To build a first row, I'm going to need a couple of cell components stuck next to each other first. And so, holding down an option key, I'll create an instance of the cell component here, and I'm going to duplicate it two times. Then I'll select everything and hit Shift A to create an outer layout frame out of it. While I'm here, I'm going to open up the alignment and padding popover to set the vertical alignment to center. And this is because in case some cells are of a different height, for example due to a text being wrapped inside, I would like the other cells to be always centered vertically within this row. Okay, I'm going to call it a default content, and I'm also going to make it a component. And lastly, I'm going to select everything inside, and I'll set the width of all cells inside to be fill container. So what we have created is not a row just yet, but a boilerplate component that we'll be able to swap with anything we want later on once it sits inside of an actual row component. Speaking of which, I'll create an instance of this default content and I'm going to hit Shift A to wrap it inside of an outer layout frame. Let's set its direction to be horizontal and let's zero out the spacing between items. I'm going to set the padding to be 0 on top and bottom and 8 pixels on the side. And this is because there is 16 pixels of padding between cell contents. So And so I want to have 16 pixels of outer padding as well. And for the inner alignment, again, I want it to be set to center. Okay, so I'm going to call it a row. And I'm going to set the width of our boilerplate component inside to be fill container. And that is because I would like the width of my tables to be controlled manually, with the content inside adjusting correspondingly. Going back into our row component, I'll set its fill to be white. And lastly, I will also need to have some border at the bottom so that it is separated from other rows. But instead of applying a stroke on this frame or drawing a rectangle at the bottom manually, I'll use one of my predefined layer styles here, namely border thin bottom. And by the way, what this layer style really is, is just an inner shadow effect with no blur and opacity whatsoever, and with the Y offset set to minus one pixel. I have similar styles created for borders on different sides as well. Okay, a default row is ready, but I feel like I would also use some hover effect too. So let's duplicate this frame and change its fill to something a bit darker, like this background default color style. Okay, now before I make it a component with variants, let's think for a minute about what other kinds of rows we might need in the future. I know I would use a row that can be selected, so let's create one quickly. I'm going to select the two row frames we created and I'm going to duplicate them while holding down an option key. Be careful not to duplicate the default content component inside though. Alright, now because it is a selectable row, I'm going to need to have a checkbox in here. To ensure consistent paddings, I'm going to put it in a cell component as a replacement of the text that sits in here by default. And so by going into the assets panel and typing in a cell, I'm going to insert an instance of a cell component here. Alright, let's go back to the layers panel and let's select the body cell content component inside. Because we treat it as a boilerplate component, I can select it and replace it with anything I want. And what I want is a checkbox. Then let's change its width to hack contents. And I can do so because my checkbox is, an also, is also an outer layout frame. And let's do the same to the cell component. Now I'm going to copy our cell with checkbox and paste it in the hovered row as well. And switch the order. Finally, for this selectable row component, we are going to need one more state, which is selected, of course. Let's duplicate this frame. I'm going to change its fill to a light blue color. And finally, I'm going to make the checkbox inside selected. Great, we have everything. Let's select all the rows and make each of them a separate component by choosing this option. And let me combine them as variants. And now it is time to set up all the properties. The first one is going to be called type. And then I'm going to add another property, and this one is going to be called state. Okay, now I'm going to select the first two rows, and I'll change their type to regular. For the remaining three, I'll call them selectable. And then I'll select the two middle rows, and I'll change their state, state property to hover. And finally, for the last selectable row, I'll change its state to active. Okay, but a table is not really a table when it doesn't tell you what is the data you're looking at. In other words, 
the last thing we're going to need is a header row. And let's create one really quickly by duplicating that row component. I'll rename this to header row and I'll go back to my previous component and I'll remain it, rename it to body row. Now for a header row, I don't think we're going to need to have a hover or an active state, so let's get rid of them right away. Let's also make sure we remove them in variant settings. We have created a header cell content component a few minutes ago, and this might be a good moment to use it. So I'm going to select the default content boilerplate component in both rows, and I'll hit a return key to select the cell component inside, and then I'll do it again to quickly select all the body cell content components. Using the swap instance menu, I'll replace it with a header cell content component. And lastly, for my header rows, I want the bottom border to be a little thicker. I'll select both variants and change their effect style to, uh, let's say, border, thick bottom. All right, that should do it for our row components. Before we finish, using the layers panel, let me drag them into the row frame so that it's all neatly organized. And I'll move the default content boilerplate component out of the way for now. Awesome. Now it is time to finally assemble our first table. See you in the next video.